So far in class, we've spent a lot of time using the electric force to explain lots of different types of observations, like polarization, charging by friction, charging by induction, and now we're going to start thinking about the electric force a little bit more quantitatively. So I want you guys to think about this situation. Imagine we had two pieces of charged tape, a top tape and a top tape, so they're both net positively charged. If we bring them close together, we know they're going to repel one another. Uh, we know there's an electric electrostatic force uh, pushing each other away from one another. And let's just imagine they're at some distance, the center of the masses. So what could you change about this situation which would increase the size of the electric force? Well, we know, number one, that distance matters. So if we bring the two objects closer to one another, we know that the electric static force, the electrostatic force would increase. So change the distance, specifically make the distance smaller. We would expect the electric force would be bigger. Well, what else, if we kept the distance the same, what else could we possibly change about this situation, which would also increase the electric force? The fact that both of these pieces of tape have a net positive charge is the reason that they're repelling one another. If we could make them more positively charged, maybe they'd repel one another even more. Well, how could you do that? Well, if we took more electrons off of the right tape or the left tape, that would make either of them more positively charged, probably increasing the size of the electrostatic force. So we could either increase or decrease the number of electrons, that would change the amount of charge, but specifically to increase the size of the electric force, we would want to decrease the number of electrons. So it seems like the electrostatic force, the size of that force depends on the distance between the two charged objects and probably the amount of net charge of those objects. Well, in our electric force lab, we're gonna specifically look at the relationship between the electric force on the charged objects and the distance between those charged objects. So how does the distance between the charged objects quantitatively affect the size of the electric force between them? So if we want to find out how the electrostatic force depends on distance, we're going to have to collect, we're going to have to set up a situation where we can measure these two things. Uh, the distance between the objects, and we're going to use the variable r to represent that separation distance. And for a given separation distance, how big is the electrostatic force? Since we want to find the relationship between those two things, we're going to have to do this at least six to eight different times so we can get different distances and different forces. Once you get your data, you're going to be graphing the electrostatic force as a function of the separation distance to find out graphically how they're related. And then if the relationship is not linear, you're going to linearize that graph, and then you're going to end up writing the equation of whatever linear graph that you had, whether it's the original graph or your linearized graph. So then we can get an algebraic representation of this relationship that we're trying to figure out. So to collect our data, we're going to actually use uh, a video and do some analysis of that video. On the left, you can kind of see what that video looks like. Uh, this is These are two charged objects. You can see that as they become closer, it becomes apparent that those objects repel one another. The object on the right is hanging from a string that's attached to the ceiling way outside of the frame of the video. But the separation distance between these two charged objects, which must have the same type of charge, either positive and positive, or negative and negative because there's repulsion going on. As that distance goes down, the one on the right swings out farther from its original like vertical equilibrium position. So we've got a freeze frame on the right. We can imagine uh, here's a separation distance. So the question is for this given distance, which is something we can measure in the video, how big is the electrostatic force? And for a different distance, how big is that electrostatic force? So I've got a freeze frame right here. Um, we know that there's that electric static force of repulsion pushing those two things away. Uh, we're going to be measuring R from the center of one of the objects to the center of the other objects. And that's just something we can measure the distance between the, the center of the charged spheres directly from a scaled video. The big question is how in the world, just by analyzing the video 
that you've just seen, how can we figure out how big the electrostatic force is? Well, we know a cu couple other pieces of information from that video. We know that the, the ball that's kind of like swinging back to the right that's attached to the string, it has a mass of 2.93 grams. And the string it's attached to is two meters long. So from the point of attachment all the way to the ceiling, way up there is two meters. So let's just think a little bit about the forces going on here to see if we can somehow find a way to estimate the size of the electrostatic force on that hanging sphere. So let's just first start with a force diagram for this freeze frame for the hanging ball right there. Well, it's not hanging straight down. Um, so the, the string is gonna be kind of pulling up and to the left. So we're gonna have a force of tension up and to the left. We're gonna have the electrostatic force of repulsion to the right, and it's got mass, so it's gonna feel a gravitational attraction straight down. So again, we're after the size of the electrostatic force. It obviously might be related to the size of these forces right here. So can we figure out the size of any of these forces in our force diagram? Well, we have the mass, so we can figure out the size of the gravitational force. Remember, the force of gravity on an object is equal to its mass times the Earth's gravitational field strength. Remember, we need to have our masses in kilograms, so 2.93 grams is a mass of 0 0.00293 kilograms, multiplied by the Earth's gravitational field strength of 9.8 newtons for each kilogram. We get that it's got a weight where the force of gravity is 0 0.029 newtons. So let's add that to our force diagram over here. Now, let's think about how these forces are related to one another. If we make the assumption that this hanging sphere is at rest, that means the sum of the forces in the x direction must be zero, and the sum of the forces in the y direction must also be zero. That means the x component of tension has to balance out the electrostatic force, and the y component of tension has to balance out the force of gravity. This means that when we look at this little right triangle that the force of tension makes, its x component is the same size as the electrostatic force, and its y component is the same size as the force of gravity, which is helpful because we know the force of gravity is 0 0.029 newtons. Now, I've labeled theta right here. This is the angle that the string is making with the vertical during this freeze frame. And let's just see if we can kind of like figure some things out using this triangle. We've got theta, we've got the opposite length of the triangle from theta and the adjacent side. And so let's use our tangent equation. The tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. So that turns out to be the opposite side is it's the same size as the electrostatic force, and the adjacent side is the same size as the force of gravity. So let's plug in our known force of gravity, 0 0.029 newtons. And if we rearrange this equation, solving for the electrostatic force, I'm going to multiply this side of the equation times 0 0.029 and the right side by 0 0.029 newtons. And we get that the electrostatic force is equal to 0 0.029 newtons times the tangent of theta. So the mass is not changing while all of this is going on, but the angle is. So if there's some way that we can measure the angle or know what the value of the tangent of theta is, we have a way to calculate the size of the electrostatic force. Well, we can't directly measure the angle in the video because the string is it's connected way above where the, the video shot is taking place. So let's look at um, a diagram of the situation itself. Let's say of the ball hanging from the string. If we could see the string, right, making an angle of theta, that's the same angle as the angle that tension is making, because tension always has to be parallel with the thing being stretched, in this case, the string. So we do know that the whole length of the string is two meters. And um, if we wanted to kind of use this triangle right here, um, let's say D right here, that's the distance the ball is moved horizontally from vertical. So this little white line right here is a string. And so right here, this would be distance D that I'm talking about. And we'd end up getting that the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, which is D, right? Um, so we don't really know enough yet, but let's think about this. Um, this is not very far compared to two meters, so theta is pretty small. 
And if theta is small, that means the adjacent side here of this triangle is pretty close to what other length, right? If theta is really, really small, the adjacent side of this triangle is very close to the size of the hypotenuse, right? The smaller theta is, the closer the adjacent side approaches the length of the hypotenuse. So if we assume theta is small, and for this video it works, then the adjacent side is basically two meters, approximately two meters, which means then we could basically write the tangent equation for this right triangle. We get the tangent of theta, is equal to the opposite side, which is d, divided by the adjacent side, which is basically two meters. So the tangent of theta using our small angle approximation is d over two meters. Well, this tangent of theta term is equal to d over two meters. So let's plug in d over two m in place of the tangent of theta. So I'm gonna substitute this in for this. And we just get 0 0.029 newtons times d over 2m, right? Now, d is actually something we can measure. We can measure lengths very easily in videos as long as we have a scaled video and a way of measuring that. So we basically take d divided by 2 multiplied by 0 0.029 newtons, and that will give us quantitatively the size of the electrostatic force. So let me simplify that one step further. I'm just going to take 0 0.029 newtons divided by 2 meters. We get that the electrostatic force could be estimated or calculated by taking 0 0.0145 newtons for each meter, all multiplied by d. And d right here, like we said, is something that we can measure directly in the video. So how do we figure out for a given separation distance r the size of the electrostatic force? Well, we measure d directly from the scaled video, and then calculate the size of the electric force using this derived equation right here. So here's actually a screenshot of the data collection video for this lab. And I've got a scaled overlay. So um, as these two objects get closer, you can pause the video. And then I've also kind of like have a marker so you can find out approximately more precisely where the center of each of the objects are. And so you can measure from the center of one object to the center of the other object using this scaled uh, ruler overlay down here. And then when you're measuring D, how far away the center of the hanging mass on the string is from vertical, right there. Um, I've got to zoom this in a little bit and added another scaled overlay to the zoom. So then you can measure how far away the center of that hanging from the string is from from that vertical line right there. So this should make your data collection a little bit easier.